This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Let's get right into your top local stories on this Tuesday. We are now just one week away from Election Day and early voting is in full swing at the registrar's office and more than three dozen vote centers across the county as well. More than half a million San Diegans have cast their votes. That's over a quarter of the county's registered voters. According to the registrar, more than 85% of votes cast in San Diego are typically mail in ballots and there was a steady stream of people stopping yesterday to drop theirs off or to vote in person. The registrar's office is expecting a voter turnout of at least 80% for this election, which means a lot more ballots will be coming in over the next week. All eyes may be on the presidential race, but here locally there are several key races that we've been following. Former San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner is challenging San Diego County Supervisor Tara Lawson Reamer for her seat on the County Board of Supervisors. They both want to represent District 3's coastal communities where homelessness is a top concern. When I was elected, we really were in a bad situation. And since then, we've built nearly a thousand county supported shelter beds. We've increased uh, by about 30% the amount we're investing in mental health and substance abuse treatment and services. As mayor, we took dramatic action, and what you're seeing on our streets didn't used to happen. We were the only big city where we actually drove it down by double digits. And so now to see it exploding countywide. Lawson Bremer says while Mayor Faulkner let the homeless situation spiral out of control, pointing to the 2017 deadly hepatitis A breakout uh, driven by homelessness, the former mayor claims the incumbent supervisor has not attended a continuum of care meeting in the last three years. Lawson Reamer says she sends a homeless expert to those meetings who has been there 80% of the time. With just one week left until Election Day, San Diego candidates are hoping to sway as many voters as possible, including Latino voters. NBC7's Nicole Gomez has the latest from the campaign trail. Well, we all know the city of San Diego has a diverse population and candidates know the importance of getting out the vote, especially when it comes to the Latino community. In the home stretch this morning, local supporters were making their final case to voters at the San Diego City College trolley stop downtown. It was a part of the Get Out the Vote event called Su Voto, Su Voz, or Your Voice, Your Vote, aimed at encouraging Latinos to get to the polls or send their ballots early. It comes as the latest NBC News poll from September gives some insight as to where Latinos are leaning. When it comes to the presidential race, the poll shows Vice President Harris is beating former President Trump among Latino voters, but that advantage has declined to Democrats' lowest level in the past four presidential cycles, a 14-point advantage versus 36 points in 2020. Overall, the poll shows Latino voters are more likely to cite the economy and rising cost of living as top priorities. Regardless of political leaning, supporters just want people to vote. I'm encouraging um, all residents and Latino residents especially to really do the research, um, get brushed up on, on the issues that are going to be on the ballot, uh, get to know the candidates and really vote for the most qualified candidate that you think is the best to represent you. For a complete guide on how to vote, where to vote, when to vote, and key information on issues, you can head to NBC7.com. Reporting from the Embarcadero, Nicole Gomez, NBC7. Today, a big milestone to help fix the border sewage crisis in the South Bay. The project to rehab and expand the International Wastewater Treatment Plant starts today. And tonight, the public can weigh in. Construction begins today. This expansion is intended to eliminate up to 90% of untreated wastewater reaching the coast. There is a public meeting today in Coronado. Meteorologist Brooke Martell joins us now with a look at your forecast. Hi, Brooke. Hey Monica and happy Tuesday. Taking a look at your daytime highs trending below seasonal norms for most of the county, if not all of it, and it will be the coldest day of the week. We're right around the mid 60s for the immediate coast. We still have that beach hazard statement today over the inland valley communities right around the mid to upper 60s, trending about 10 degrees below seasonal averages there. But look at Julian 49 degrees for a max daytime high 52 for Pine Valley 74 for the desert region. I'll have that 10 day forecast coming up. Thank you, Brooke. After more than 20 years, one of the worst roads, yep, this one right here in San Diego, is finally getting some major repairs. You can imagine many people are relieved. We're going to tell you exactly where this is coming up next. Stay with us.
Decision 2024, NBC7 puts you at the center of election coverage. From right here at home, looking at the big issues on the ballot impacting you. Why should voters continue to bear the burden of fixing city infrastructure? To Washington, D.C. and across the country with NBC News. Once every four years, the big one, the presidential election. Ballots are already being cast in many places. Decision 2024, local and national coverage of every race and every story. On NBC7, coverage you count on. This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Welcome back. A mental competency hearing is expected today for the man accused of a deadly dental office shooting in El Cajon. Mohammed Abdul Karim is accused of killing one person and injuring two others in the attack back in February. El Cajon police say he was a disgruntled patient who used a gun he purchased just two weeks prior to the shooting. Abdul Karim faces multiple felony charges, including one count of murder and two counts of attempted murder. Governor Gavin Newsom just announced a major cash infusion will go toward getting the state's homeless crisis under control. Newsom joined L.A. Mayor Karen Bass today announcing new state funding of $827 million to tackle the homeless crisis. It will be allocated to 37 jurisdictions throughout the state. San Diego will get nearly 60 million. Newsom said there will be reorganized delivery systems to increase accountability and help local jurisdictions do to do do more. The funding will be focused on moving the homeless into permanent housing and helping them maintain that housing. Today, one of San Diego's worst streets is getting a much needed makeover. Aquamansa Road is located in a neighborhood just west of Camino Ruiz in Mira Mesa. You can see it here on this map. The city says it hasn't had any major repairs in more than two decades. And neighbors tell NBC7's Audra Stafford it has been paved with problems for the last couple of years. From where I'm standing here on Aquamansa, you can really see just how bad the conditions are on this street. Just way too many cracks and potholes to count. And right over here, you can see what it's going to look like when all this work is done. It wasn't always so bad, but now I guess we are the uh, worst street in San Diego. Bob Mikowski isn't exaggerating. The city says Aquamansa scored just six points out of a possible 100 on a recent citywide pavement assessment, earning it an F rating. Bob says the real problems began a couple years ago when city crews began repairing and repaving all the other streets in the neighborhood. And then all the heavy equipment started coming up and down the street and it just like it destroyed the street. This was a road that had been left behind. The city's transportation director says they're doing their best to get caught up but she acknowledges they still have a long way to go. What we're showing today is that we're increasing our capabilities with our in-house teams. We're doing more work with contractors, but there is absolutely a funding gap for more road infrastructure. So we, we're gonna keep working at it hard. I'm just glad to see it getting done. The city's transportation department says they hope to have all of the work finished and the entire road looking nice and smooth like this by the end of today. From Mira Mesa, I'm Audra Stafford, NBC7. And as always, you can report potholes and other road-related problems in your neighborhood through the city's Get It Done app. We have a link for you on NBC7.com. Just look for it right there in the trending bar. NBC7 meteorologist Brooke Martell will have a look at your weather forecast right after this. NBC7 and Telemundo 20. Weather coverage you count on. You count on accuracy. The winds are going to be increasing. You count on these experts. Take a look here at our future weather. In two languages. You count on innovative tech. Look at our first alert Doppler radar. From a team you depend on. Dry conditions to round out this week. You count on early warnings. The tornado warning for parts of East County. Because you know every second counts. It just kept getting worse and worse. This is first alert weather. This is coverage you count on. Only on NBC7 and Telemundo 20. Here's a look at your 10 day forecast. Conditions will continue to dry out through the end of the week and looking ahead to Halloween. We will have temperatures right around those 70s between the coast and the valleys. Meantime, the evening temperatures for trick or treaters right around the 50s and 60s. So it will be a cooler evening looking ahead to the weekend here. We do have more rain chances back in the forecast and temperatures will taper to the 60s again for the coast and the valleys 50s by that time for the mountains. We could be back to the 70s for the desert region. Have a great day. Looks like a nice Halloween. More coverage account on at NBC7.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.